two inside, but just kind of starting in the back here. So the HD series headers that we have now uh, go over this kind of naming system here. Deer, when we launched X series, we kind of redid uh, naming system of our front end equipment. So HD would stand for eight hinge draper and the RD, which is the tried and true flex draper is now known as a rigid draper. That's all going from what the frame type is. The first two letters are frame type. So hinge draper, we have our hinge point right here. The attachment frame, similar to the uh, draper series, the D series, before we went to flex drapers, we have an attachment frame and then our hinging point is gonna be right here on both sides. So hinge draper, HD. RD is rigid draper, so the whole back tube, it's, it's a solid piece. It makes sense if you think about it as being a rigid draper, hinge draper, and then the next numbers are the size. So you got 35, 40, 45, and 50 in a hinge draper. Flex draper is the same, same thing. You can go to a 30 foot uh, flex draper. So HD 50R. The last one is gonna be your cutter bar type. So this is a rigid cutter bar. We do have our flexible cutter bar in HDs as well now. Um, and that's why, for instance, on the flex draper, RD 45F, it's a flexible cutter bar. Um, so just something to keep in mind, that's how the naming system set up. It makes sense once you realize why we did what we did, but the, it's gonna take a little bit to get off the FD uh, flex draper and go into an RDF. Um, so as I mentioned before, being a hinge right here, uh, allows us to get out to the wing there, we can get 23 inches of flex up and down. Uh, I should have added a few more blocks because we can get more up at this point over here. The other side is level. Um, but I will show you right here. This, this valve is for when you're trailering. Um, it, basically the pressures can build up if it's sitting on a trailer. Uh, so this is a relief valve. This one here is the, the more of a safety valve for when you're servicing the head. Do you want to be able to work on the hydraulic systems or you want to guarantee the thing won't move? You go ahead and shut that. Uh, it should not move. I haven't had any complaints about that. But when you're uh, putting on a trailer or you want to see this thing flex, this is what the solenoid right here, you're going to push in and go counterclockwise. Make sure nobody's around there. That's going to open up the relief valve and that's going to allow us to hinge the draper to its max mechanical spot. So and I can do the same on the other side. Each wing is independent, but like I said, when you go to put this on a header trailer, the decals are a little confusing, but you're going to want to uh, push that in and go counterclockwise and that just prevents pressure as the sun's hitting these cylinders and it's building pressure. It won't want to work, let that wing work up um, off the header trailer. Haven't had any complaints. I know guys have forgotten to do that, but it's our kind of a safety. Uh, want to make sure everyone's aware that we encourage you and recommend that you do that. After it's sitting on the trailer? After it's sitting on the trailer. And then when you go to hook up again, be sure after your strap's undone, come over to each swing, close it clockwise. Basically, that it's just a relief valve. So now if I put the header down, it will go to and pick back up it will level out to where it was. So in order to get that header to smile a little bit, I just put blocks on the outer float arm, push the head down, and then it's kind of, it locks the, the pressure in there so when you lift the head up. The AHC, the auto height control, as it's going through the field, it's gonna allow that flex mode to, to it will make adjustments as it's going if you're cutting over terraces. Close the valve before you pick the header up. You yes. have to push down, right? It's, it's a push down, so yeah, to, to basically, uh, when this relief valve is open, you can push down the head and it and then pick back up it won't work because it's it's allowing oil to go and gravity's pulling the weight of it down but when it's closed then it's going to lock it out and it, it's like a one-way cylinder so as it's going it's down like this and it comes down and pick back up the oil pressure since you close this relief valve will not let it move so when it's on the trailer and you f forget to uh close the valve and it's it's frowning like this just put it back down on the trailer close the valve and it'll lock itself out and be rigid again it, I hope I'm explaining that right. It's, it's one of those, you do it once, and then after that you're like, yep. It's, it's, it's a simple, simple thing. Um, and it, you will forget, I've forgotten to do them on before, and it's just put the head back down, close the valve, and start again. Um, one thing I would like to mention here, uh, with the Model Year 21's uh, headers, RDFs, and HDs, this is a 50-footer. We do not uh, have... We do not have 50 foots for S series. However, 
45s, 40s, and 35s. There is adapter kits. Since the feeder house on X is wider, you can have a 45, 40, 35 HD or RDF that will fit an X and an S. Um, there's attachment plates that would bolt to here and go down below, and that will, sh since the feeder house is wider, that shortens, and shortens it up for an S series. Um, there's also an electrical pin connector uh, change over there. I'll touch on that when we get to that side, but one, you will know that you can switch heads between machines. There is an, a kit that needs to be ordered to do it, but it's not a hard process. It probably takes 15 minutes to uh, get the brackets in place, bolt it, and away you go. Uh, so HDR gauge wheels here. Uh, HDFs can be ordered with or without gauge wheels. Your gauge wheels are your height sensing. Um, basically, it's going to set your cut height when you're cutting off the ground. So if you're cutting wheat, um, you can adjust these cylinders, and that is going to be what is setting how much stubble you're leaving after. Uh, HDF, you're cutting on the ground, so you do, wouldn't necessarily need to have gauge wheels, but if you have both crops where you, or your conditions where you're going to cut on ground, off ground, uh, wheat and soybeans, you're going to want to make sure you get an HDF, flexible cutter bar, for the soybeans, but have the gauge wheels on. Kind of moving further along, this head does not have it, but an option that we do offer is uh, wing leveling. There would be a cylinder behind here, and basically, when you come out of cut, and say you were cutting a terrace, so this wing was down, and you lift it up, this wing would stay down. Well, if, if that's something that you're worried about, you know, not getting up high enough, wing leveling, what that does is it allows, when you pick up, it will put the head back to a level, rigid spot, or smiling a little bit, either way. It's just... A, Guys who do a lot of terrace work are, and were concerned about not having enough height as they're going into hills and valleys and terraces about getting that wing up. Wing leveling is a feature that we have that will uh, allow you to get that header rigid to go, uh, the header to go rigid again. Uh, kind of the thing with HD is it's going away from uh, our RDF, which are Hydroforce. So they use hydraulics to on the float arms to get our flexing of the cutter bar. This is not, this is all mechanical. So this is not an HDF, but if it was, on the end over here, there would be a linkage that you would adjust and that would allow the cutter bar to drop four inches independent. Um, and like I said, this one does not have it, but that's, that's where you're gonna get, see mechanical over hydraulic. Uh, it's gonna, the springs are gonna ride over on um, flexing the cutter bar and then it will not go up higher because otherwise we run, we'll run the risk of shaving our uh, real fingers. So it will drop four inches, and if it gets into a condition where it needs to raise up, that's where the hinge part will take over, and then it will rise up, and as, as it's rising, if it needs to shave the ground a little closer, the springs will drop out as the hinge is work, uh, rising. They work together uh, to achieve the, a nice cut, but just wanted to make sure everyone's aware that it's kind of it's it's like RDFs, but it's not. Uh, we're not using the hydraulics to adjust the cutter bar. It's all spring. Top augers. Um, I don't know how many guys are doing canola in this area. Probably not too many. Um, but if you wanted to run top augers, uh, that's also an option that we have available for these HDs. Uh, and there would be a valve body in this area that you can toggle them with a lever. You can toggle the top augers on or off, as well as adjust speed. Um, we also offer side knives. Again, this is more probably for the guys doing canola. Uh, side knife kit for straight cutting canola. Yeah. Uh, as we kind of transition yeah. around here, keep walking over this way. Just Our feed drum, so, or whatever. similar feed drum as the RDF, certain conditions. I don't see it often. You can adjust that up an inch, pretty simple. Two bolts on top, one bolt in the bottom, and there's a turn buckle uh, that will raise it up and then tighten everything up again. Uh, we do have a shark fin here to help with underfeeding, or if you're in a uh, low volume crop run, that runs the risk of shooting over uh, underfeeding, this is an option that can be ordered. Uh, the center belt system here, the, on the back side, there's uh, two levers to drop down, uh, toolless, so you don't need to have a 24 wrench or anything to undo a, a bolt. That will drop down to adjust the the, dry, the tension on the belt, it's on both sides, uh, similar to all the rest of the belts, tensioning's on the combine, uh, spring with an indicator. Make sure that if you do need to tension this, that you're doing both the left and the right side evenly. 
Uh, as I continue working down this way, um, the reel, the, the center reel pump there, uh, we've increased the torque of that. Uh, so you're, you're, you'll see a little better performance there as far as if you're in down crop and you're kind of pulling the dirt and it stalls out. This has a little more torque to get power through that. Um, something I didn't mention back on that float arm, on the new HDs, this one's a year old, we've got a sticker on the arm. So if you're running multiple machines and you have an operator who's not as experienced um, and they're not sure where to set the reel, it's a simple, hey, set it at a five, set it at a four, and they can adjust it where it needs to be, whether or not uh, throwing crop, they're, they're not leaving it, uh, trying to make it just a little more uh, user friendly for all anyone who wants to hop in the combine or needs to hop in the combine. Uh, skid shoes, uh, we did have uh, a little issue with some skid shoe wear. We've got that fixed with a software update. Um, there was some pressure tables that were wrong out of the factory and that was causing some issues but uh, that shouldn't see any issues going forward in there. Uh, if you do, please uh, reach out to your dealer um, and we'll get something fixed there. But it, it shouldn't be an issue going forward. That was fixed mid, mid uh, year last year. Uh, as I continue through here, uh, going over to this side here, we're still doing direct drive shafts for the gearboxes. Uh, X series is going to run the knife about 300 RPM faster than an S series will. Change some of the uh, shielding here. The big on the RDFs, they were kind of big and awkward. This one's still big and awkward, but at least it carries its own weight here. Um, easier to put on and off. Something new on the new 21 headers and beyond, including RDFs. Uh, there's illumination over the deer, and then you'll, there'll also be lights on the divider tips. So when you're combining at night, uh, or you're roading at night or anything like that and you want to be able to see a little better where your tip is at We've got lights integrated into there uh, Coming to the back side here The tension on the uh, side belt. So if you notice HDs are a solid uh, One-piece belt on each wing RDFs are still uh, two-piece on the wings with a gap in between uh, But with that the tensioning system is slightly different instead of you Instead of having to tighten it and then walk around to see what the tension gauge is, you're going to come over here. There's a 24 on the back side in this spot here. Your tension gauge right here. It's a lot easier to uh, be able to tension as, by yourself without even having to move around. So I want to make sure you guys are aware of that to check your tension, especially when you first get into uh, harvesting here. Uh, there will be some stretch after the first day and probably a couple days later. So just keep an eye on that. Uh, and make sure you're tensioning that belt, especially the, at the very beginning. Uh, again, gauge wheels, if you're going to be cutting soybeans on ground, you're going to have the gauge wheels sucked all the way up because uh, otherwise they're, they're what sets that where the cutter bar is going to ride. So on ground cutting soybeans, the gauge wheels will be all the way up. And there's a system. These have controller units on them now. Then that will tell it, hey, we're cutting on ground. If it sees 15% more of the cylinder showing, then it's going to know that's cutting off ground. So if you get in a condition where uh, the customer has it down a little bit or you're running it down a little bit but it's not shaving the ground good, it's probably because it doesn't, it's over the 15% and doesn't know that we're cutting on ground. So just something to be aware of. Um, with that, I mentioned about the header control unit. That's going to be here. That's new on all 21s going forward, RDFs included, corn heads. Everything is going to have controllers on it now which is good. Uh, we can save cows from the factory and or when you hook onto your head, you run do your calibration and it will save that calibration header cow. Uh, you can uh, see actual hours before on your S series. You were gonna have header hours running and it was based off if it saw a flex draper or corn head, it was gonna keep those hours counting. Now we know exactly how many hours this head has because it has its own control unit. It's gonna keep track of all that. It also knows that it's a 45, so instead of where you had to go in and type in, I have a 40-foot uh, flex draper and that's my guidance and all that, this is going to set your GPS and set your cut width and all that right from the get-go because it knows what it is. X-Series machines, which we'll see in there, have a 9-pin electrical hookup. The HDs also have a 9-pin hookup, so the S-Series machines, if you want to run 
an HD on an S series. Had the newer machines, 21 and newer S series, possibly late late 20s, had it too. There's a harness that has the nine pin connector, and then I can show you in there. It's underneath the feeder house. That would go in on the machine, so you'd hook directly to that. Corn heads, uh, they have their own nine pin on the header side. Just HDs do not have a 31 pin connector, but the corn heads will be a slightly different deal. They have the 31 on the header side. You would just end up swapping out of the multi-coupler. 